before my role as the CEO of uh, ISOKL, I was Israel's privacy commissioner for seven years between 2006 and 2013. And I'm uh, a lawyer, unfortunately, um, dealing with the interaction between law and technology for the last uh, 30 years or so. Um, and um, I was asked to talk about the relation between artificial intelligence and, and, and privacy or with data protection. And uh, I named my talk as A Privacy, AI, Privacy, and Data Protection. Now, for most of the people, AI, um, sorry, uh, uh, privacy and data protection are the same. So there is privacy commissioner or data protection commissioner. But with relate to this discussion, I think that I want to differentiate between the two terms. And one note ahead, when I speak about artificial intelligence, I'm speaking about the situation where we predict that machines are going to, to do tasks that are currently performed by human beings. So they are going in the, that we are living in a, in, a, in a society where machines are kind of competing with, uh, with human beings, okay? Uh, this is the, 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 the main idea behind the first part of my talk. Now, we cannot avoid talking about data protection and the four letter words which are called GDPR. So the second part of my talk will be about data protection. But I want to speak, to start with speaking about uh, privacy. So, what's that? Um, experts of privacy uh, are talking about the differentiation between classic privacy and data protection. Data protection is, has taken most of the discussion in the, in the last 20 years because we are living in a data-driven um, um, society, but privacy is something which is related to us uh, as human being, and it's a need, it's a psychological need that I think that we should understand. Now, from the legal point of view, privacy was first defined as, as a legal right by the end of the 19th century. It was defined as the right to be let alone. It was defined as the right to be let alone by two scholars named uh, Brandeis and Warren. Brandeis was later a, a Supreme Court judge of the, of the American Supreme Court. And the situation was that uh, for the first time they have noticed that taking photographs in, an, uh, in a party became a privacy matter and they defined the, the, the term, the right to, they define the, the, the term of the right to privacy as the right to be let alone. And I want to read what they wrote, which is very interesting for us. So re recent inventions and business method call attention to the next step, which must be taken from the protection of the person and for securing the individual that, that, that what just coolly calls the right to be let alone. Numerous medical devices threaten to make good the prediction that what is whispered in the closet shall, should be proclaimed from the housetops. So, Warren and Brandes, back in the 8th of 19th century, understands that the right to privacy is technology challenged. So this is the main idea behind uh, privacy because it is all the time being threatened. And, and, and today, and when we look to the future, this is, this is what, what is the main 
I would say, threat to the, uh, to the human society. Um, the, the right to privacy has been discussed in a lot of uh, um, court cases, and I want to, to give a summary from a, from a court decision by the Israeli Supreme Court, uh, uh, which uh, was written uh, by uh, Justice Aaron Barak in a case which called Plonit versus the rabbinical court of uh, Netanyahu, or something like this. And Barak is uh, stating the right to privacy as a complex right which the borders are how to are in line. And every lawyer that deals with, uh, with the privacy know that because when you, you are trying to understand what is exactly the point that we have to take a look at that, that we have to take a look at, it is not sure. Is there a harm? Not sure. Is there something that, uh, that uh, when, when we weigh the privacy versus other rights, what is the right balance? Very difficult to say. Um, and Barak says that the uh, right to privacy is, in, is intended to enshrine the autonomy of, of the person. So it's part of the right of human dignity. And it is aimed to, give, to grant the individual a, protecting, a protected living space where he or she can determine his or her own behavior without the inspection of the society. As such, this right limits the access of the society to the person and and such limitation of the access is crucial to building the personality of the human being, okay? And it is one of the most important rights in a democratic society. Now, I want to give you an example which I, I recently, people who know me like Iran knows that I don't have a beard, but I came from a Vipassana course uh, a few days uh, ago, and uh, I don't know if you know, but in a Vipassana course, you have to be silent for 10 days, and basically don't have to, you cannot communicate with other participants of the course. And I understood how important is this protection that is given for you during the course to be only with yourself. Okay, so this is really, for me, was really an example how important privacy was. And I'm basically in the privacy business for a long time and, and, and understanding how this shell around you gives you the ability to really think about very deep issues about yourself in this uh, Vipassana course is really the, the best example to how, uh, why privacy is uh, so important. So basically, as Barak says, privacy is a matter of, in, of autonomy, of making your own decisions. It is basic, is, it is uh, protecting you from the eyes of the society. And it, uh, it is aimed to build your own self-determination. You already know that I like uh, movies now. Uh, it, it will continue. And, uh, and, and with this notion, I want to proceed and to see what will be the relation between privacy of human beings and machines. Uh, When we are talking about big data analysis, about machine learning, we are talking about prediction. And, uh, and prediction is uh, aimed to try and understand what we are going to do. The whole, um, the whole 
big data of today, whether it is for, uh, whether it is for uh, marketing, for selling, uh, for selling ads, or for uh, predicting ad and things we do, whether it's driving, is uh, in the end conflicts with our, with our autonomy to make decision. Because if we are, if there is a machine that predicts what we are doing, then part of our autonomy to take decision by ourselves is limited. Uh, and, and as you know, uh, the, uh, the advantage of, uh, for instance, behavioral targeting ads is that they know exactly how to influence your decision making. So if I know how to influence your decision making, then basically it is infringing my autonomy. Most of the people do not understand that because they, it's, either they treat it as, okay, I like it, it present me, uh, present me an ad that I like or whatever, but, and I think that uh, the best example was in the, um, in the Cambridge Analytics uh, um, case that we see it, that if I can influence the way people think according to big data analysis processes that, that I do, then I influence the autonomy because then I manage to, to move them to do things that I want them to do. Okay? So distance is something that is very important to understand. And, and by the way, I don't know who are the few participants, I know one of the participants here in the, in, in the room, but for me this talk is part of something that I think that should be part of the syllabus of every university, which is the ethics of programming. So, and unfortunately I think that this is less thought than it should be. So, if people are dealing with, uh, with machine learning and with, with analytics, with things that are related to how I influence the way people think or behave, I think that the ethics of programming is a very important subject to be thought of. Another aspect of the relation between uh, privacy and, uh, and AI is that, as you know, to err is human, and to, the, the saying is to err is human to forgive divine. When we, when we look at the way that artificial intelligence is going to, basically, we are trying to build a machine that is not wrong. Okay, this is something that, um, and, and we will let, like if you take about, we will take in a minute the case of autonomous car, but we will let autonomous car to go on road if they will not be wrong, right? But the question is, how does this uh, concept affect human beings? Because we are used to make errors and it is important for us to make errors. This is the way that we learn and, uh, and, uh, and keeping the ability to make errors is important, very, it's very important for us. Now, if we will start to live with machines that are not wrong, what, how will it affect us? We will be, and I'll talk about it in, man, in a minute, all the time we're in a constant, um, in a constant um, competition with a machine which is not, uh, which is right all the time. It's like living all the time with a Polish mother, right? That's not good. So this is the case that I want to talk about. I don't know who of you is using Mobileye in the car. Okay, this buzz, but uh, I'm, I'm, I really like to drive. And uh, I once drove with this uh, buzzer that every time you move a bit from the line, 
it starts to buzz. This is really disturbing. Now, this is not artificial intelligence, but, but think of the situation that this will be our life. So every time we, we move a bit from what is considered to be the right path, we are going to be buzzed, okay? We do not want to live in such a society. And, and, and when we are moving more and more decision-making into a machine that are taking the decision, this is the situation. So basically we will go to the average. And going to the average for human society is very bad. And so some would ask, what, are the, what does it related to privacy? It is related to privacy because of the autonomy, because of the autonomy to make decision, because of the autonomy to make errors. Um, so this is another situation. You are a professional, and now you are basically have to compete with a machine that is taking the decision and now maybe you are wrong. So, and, and it's not that I really believe that, that uh, AI systems are very close in the sense that they are going to replace experts, but it is going to come more and more, and especially with ordinary people. Because if you are an expert and you are an expert, it's okay. But for ordinary people, on an ordinary task, if you have to do, if you have to compete with a machine that in average is better than you, this is something that we have to understand. Um, I don't know if you remember this, uh, this, um, um, this uh, movie or book about they shoot horses, don't they? But uh, it talks about the intense... Um, life, the, the, basically it talks about the capitalistic, capitalistic uh, method, the American capitalistic me method, but this is, this is, a, this is a, a prediction that we, can, we have to look at. We may live in a situation that we all the time have to compete with the machine. So if you are very talented, then you may be able to, to handle this, but if you are not, and in us, in some us, everyone is not everyone, there's no one who is talented in everything, then you're going to compete all the time with the machine. Um, now, another aspect which I um, think that we have to ask related to privacy is whether AI system deserve privacy. Now, um, why I ask that? Because we want machines to, 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 to think, okay, to, to, to make a decision. So if we need some kind of protection from the outside, maybe we need to give some protection from, uh, from, for, uh, for the systems. So, and, and by the way, this is as far as I know, I'm not a, not, I'm not a data science uh, uh, researcher, but um, machine learning, basically, people are saying, and we will get to it in a minute, that it's a black box, and we really do not know how exactly it took the decision, right? So if you do not know exactly how it took the decision, kind of, kind of doing its own um, uh, thinking, so maybe we need to let the machine decide. So I think that everyone understands that we do not want to be in such a situation that we give privacy to, to the system. Um, so we need to implement values into the machine. And I'm a great fan of Asimov. I think that he was really looking much further than... Uh, 40 years ago, 50, 60 years ago, I think, when he wrote the, when he wrote the, the first uh, series about robots. But basically, he, is talking, he was talking about embedding moral decision into machines. 
And I think that we have to, to, to discuss this. And I know that this is part of the discussion today, that the question about autonomous car, whether you kill the grandfather or the, or the kid or the, okay, but this is, this, is really, this is really the main issue here. So now let's move to, to data protection. AI, big data, it's all about collecting information, huge amount of information, processing them. Two, two minutes? Okay. Ah, okay. Um, so I want to refer to, uh, I said GDPR, uh, GDPR is, the, I think probably everyone knows today what GDPR is. Uh, I took what I think are the four most interesting and relevant principles to AI from, from GDPR. Uh, the first of one is fairness. So when we are talking about uh, machines that are taking decisions instead of humans, we have to see that uh, the concept, the, the, the basic legal concept of, of fairness is embedded into, um, into the, to the machine. I think that Iran is going to talk about it, uh, right, later. Um, which exactly is the, the problem of algorithm bias, so if I let the algorithm decide what happens, how do I avoid a bias of the algorithm in a way that it will infringe the, 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 the fairness principle. Uh, from my point of view, one of the most important uh, concepts of the GDPR is related to the next slide, which if, if we are talking about black box, then the, uh, the, the importance of the transparency of automated decision making is one of the most um, important principles because, and, and I know that it is very difficult to, to perform it. And this is one of the things that the community the technological community and the legal community should find a solution how I transparent the algorithm while keeping uh, secrets. And, and uh, the question whether uh, I'm not, as I said, I'm not a um, data science guy, so I don't know if really you cannot, uh, you cannot understand the algorithm. I think that this is making the, decision, the, the question quite uh, shallow. I think that there, is, there should be a way for us to be able to examine how the algorithm is working, and this is a, a major issue. Um, this is a basic, a basic uh, data protection principle, personal pers limitation, but like, I don't know if you've been to the previous uh, um, uh, talk, which was on, the gen on genetics in my heritage. I was sitting asking myself, how do they do genetic researches uh, from how they move from, from basically genealogy to, to, um, to genetic uh, information? So this is not an easy one, and, 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 and the way that you collect in the information from one purpose, and you get to other purpose, and I know that it is very important because sometimes you collect it and you can find the answers for very, for very important uh, questions, uh, not for the purpose that you have collected the, the information. So this is, this is not an easy, this is not an easy subject for us, the lawyers, to, to, to solve. And I'll skip it. Uh, the last important, very important uh, principle is the principle of privacy by design. What is written above, by the way, is, um, is the saying, uh, 
which in Hebrew is מה טובו אליך יעקב משכנותיך ישראל which I don't know if you know but this is the first mention for privacy in design uh, at, um, at, um, at the Bible because the saying is why, why the tents were good, the, the Israeli tents were good because the entrance to the, to the tents were opposite to each other so you could not see who's entering into the tent. So basically, this is, this is, the, this is the interpretation for this uh, saying that the tents were good, and this is basically privacy by design. I designed the tents in order to keep uh, privacy, um, but from my point of view, privacy by de design equals privacy impact assessment, which is the, the process of how I examine what is the outcome of the, 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 the system that I develop, plus applying privacy enhancing technologies, that's the PET, on, in the system. So data minimization, encryption, whatever, and the connection between the two gives a, a better system. And privacy by design, in the end, is the most important process in the sense that if you do it correctly, you will come up with a better system and a very better in the sense of privacy protection. From my point of view, it will be also better from the functionality point of view. It will be more efficient. It will have less risks, which is important. And, um, and that's all. So questions. We have time for one question. Do you think it's better to do a scale from 0 to 10? And I want 3.5 on the scale of privacy so I can have usability. Uh, first of all, it's not binary. By the way, as I can tell you as a lawyer, lawyers, they know how to balance between things, okay? So there are values that are, there is also, um, you need to balance between privacy and security, right? So full privacy can give you less security, or full privacy can give you less freedom of expression. So it's not, it, it's, it's, it is never 10, okay? And I can tell you that I myself, as a privacy commission, I was really very practical in the way of thinking. I, I, I didn't think that privacy is the, the, is the only important thing, but, if you take it into consideration, everything that you do, you'll come up with, in the end, with a, with a, with a good balance, okay? The problem is that in most of the pay cases, people do not, did not, I don't know, today it is changing, did not think about privacy at all, and came up with systems, and then it's said, oh, I have to take care of that, this is a threat or whatever, and then, to do reverse designing, this is very bad. So if this is exactly the privacy by design issue. Once you embed privacy into your decision making, you will come up with a more balanced um, system.